Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Pathology Learning. I am Dr. Monica. In today's class, we will be seeing about the next topic which is phagocytosis and other inflammation chapter. In the previous video, we had seen about the initial events which happen in acute inflammation starting from the vascular events. Under cellular events, we had seen about how the phagocytic cells reach from the vessel lumen to the site of the offending agent. So, after reaching to the site of the offending agent, what happens? So, that is what we will be seeing today. So, once the neutrophils or the macrophages, the phagocytic cells basically, once these cells had reached the site of the offending agent, they will have to engulf this offending agent and then kill it. So, that is what is termed as phagocytosis. It literally means eating up of a cell. Okay. So, for that to happen, the initial step is recognition. That is, once the phagocyte reached that site, it has to recognize the offending agent. So, how does this uh, recognize this offending agent? It is because of the help of certain receptors. So, what are these receptors? So, these are mannose receptor which are going to recognize the mannose present on the cell wall of the bacteria. Then the scavenger receptors and the receptors for opsonins. So, what are opsonins? Opsonins are nothing but they are some uh, coating. So, there are some certain substances like IgG and C3B which are known as opsonins because these substances are known for coating the offending agents. So, once they are coated, they are going to be easily recognized by this phagocytic cells. So, this process of coating up of the offending agents with these opsonins is called as opsonization. So, opsonins are nothing but IgG and C3B. So, we have receptors in the phagocytic cells which can recognize these opsonin coated offending agents. Okay. So, moving on, we will see about the second step which is engulfment. Now, the phagocytic cells had recognized the offending agent and it has attached to it. Now, what happens? This phagocytic cell is going to go and cover over this offending agent. That is, it is going to throw some pseudopodia kind of thing and it will form a vesicle around this microbe. Okay. So, now it has formed a phagocytic vesicle. Now, this phagocytic vesicle is going to go and fuse with a lysosome present inside the cytoplasm of the phagocytic cell. So, this is called as phagolysosome formation. So, wherein this phagosome is going to fuse with the lysosome. So, the next step will be intracellular killing. So, inside this phagolysosome, there is going to be killing of whatever offending agent has been taken up. So, how does this intracellular killing happen? It happens with the help of three things basically, which is reactive oxygen species. Like, uh, these are nothing but free radicals as we had discussed before. Then, nitric oxide. Then with the help of lysosomal enzymes. So, these three things are responsible for the intracellular killing. So, we will see one by one starting with reactive oxygen species. There is something called as NADPH oxidase. It is also called as a phagocyte oxidase. So, this enzyme is a multi-component enzyme meaning part of the enzyme is going to be present in the plasma membrane, part of the enzyme is going to be present in the cytoplasm. So, once these macrophages or the neutrophils uh, get activated, now, what happens is NADPH will also get activated and they are going to form a functional enzyme. So, the plasma membrane component, the cytoplasmic membrane component will all come together and form a organized functional enzyme on the surface of this phagolysosome which has formed. Okay. So, now when this NADPH oxidase had formed, what will happen? It is going to oxidize NADPH to NADP. So, during this reaction, it is going to reduce oxygen into superoxide. So, superoxide as we all know it is a free radical. So, this superoxide is then going to get converted into hydrogen peroxide with the help of superoxide dismutase. This H2O2 can either get converted into hydroxyl free radical that is OH or this H2O2 it is going to react with a halogen like chloride in the presence of an enzyme called as MPO. MPO is nothing but myeloperoxidase and this MPO is going to be present inside the neutrophilic granules. So, this H2O2 in the presence of a halogen like chloride and with the help of this myeloperoxidase enzyme can get converted into HOCl which is nothing but bleach, hypochlorite is uh, bleach substance. So, this hypochlorite is a very potent microbicidal agent. So, this HOCl is going to degrade whatever bacteria is present inside this phagolysosome. Okay. So, this system 
which is this H2O2 MPO halide system is the most important bactericidal system in the neutrophils. So this reaction wherein this NADPH was converted into uh, NADP while this superoxide ion was formed. No, this reaction is also called as respiratory burst. Okay, remember th these two things respiratory burst and this MPO halide system. So moving on to the second mechanism of intracellular killing which is nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is produced with the help of an enzyme called as nitric oxide synthase and this nitric oxide synthase is of three types. So it has three forms basically enos, inos and ennos. Enos is present in endothelium while ennos will be present in the neurons and inos stands for inducible NOS. Usually enos and ennos are constitutively expressed that is that they are, they are normally active uh, present in an active state only but this inos will be activated only when the inflammatory mediators are triggering this enzyme so inos what will uh, it will lead to the formation of this nitric oxide this nitric oxide can go and combine with superoxide free radical and and form a peroxy nitrate this is again a free radical and this is again going to cause damage to the engulfed material so this reaction of nitric oxide killing is mainly seen in the macrophages so moving on to the third mechanism of killing which is lysosomal enzymes this lysosomal enzymes present inside this phagolysosome is now going to kill the bacteria or the offending agent so neutrophils usually have two types of lysosomal granules primary azurophilic granules or secondary specific granules so the primary granules are mpo lysozyme defensins acid hydrolases, elastases and other neutral proteases ok. So we saw about this MPO enzyme now only which was involved in the uh, ROS production. So these lysozymes and defensins are going to be antimicrobials. Till now we had seen about the vascular events, cellular events which happen in the acute inflammation. Then we saw about phagocytosis in which there were three steps involved. First was recognition step, the second one was engulfment, then the third one was intracellular killing by three mechanisms which is ROS, then nitric oxide, then lysosomal enzymes. So now the bacteria or whatever offending agent was there, it has been degraded by the uh, phagocytic cells. Now this acute inflammation has to stop so that it does not uh, cause further tissue damage. So how does this stop? Once this offending agent is removed, obviously the inflammatory mediators which were released in response to that will stop. I already mentioned neutrophils are the predominant mediators of this uh, acute inflammation. So they have a very short half-life and so their neutrophils will die and again acute inflammation will stop. So uh, when this offending agent has been removed, the anti-inflammatory mediators like lipoxins, TGF-beta, interleukin-6, interleukin-10 and interleukin-13, these are going to be released which will cause again the termination of this acute inflammation. Other than that, we also have cholinergic discharge which is going to inhibit the TNF discharge. TNF-alpha is one of the most important inflammatory mediators. So this production of this TNF-alpha is going to be inhibited by cholinergic discharge. So all of these events will cause termination of the acute inflammation. Now that we had seen about what are the uh, events happening in acute inflammation, we will see what are the clinical aspects of this acute inflammation, what are the uh, problems which can, we can face with acute inflammation. So starting with leukocyte addition defect. So addition was one of the cellular events we saw in acute inflammation. So for addition, what was the thing which was needed? It was integrins, integrins present on the WBCs. So when these integrins are defective or deficient, so it is going to cause recurrent infection. Uh, leukocyte addition defect, we have two types. The first defect will be in the integrin LFA1 and MAC1. In type 2, what is defective? There is an enzyme called as fucosyl transferase. The defect in this enzyme will lead to absence of silyl Lewis X. So this silyl Lewis X is nothing but a ligon for the P and E selectin. So selectin we all saw it was responsible for the rolling step. Right. So the ligon for the E and P selectin will be present on the WBCs. They are going to be defective. Again, rolling will not happen. So both of this will going to cause recurrent infection. Moving on to the second syndrome which is Shediac Higashi syndrome. This Shediac Higashi syndrome is a very rare autosomal uh, recessive condition only. Here there is a defect in the gene called as LIST. LIST stands for lysosomal trafficking regulatory protein. It is basically a regulatory uh, protein which regulates the transport of this lysosomes inside the cells. So this list gene is defective. So what happens because of this? 
the phagosome and lysosome are not going to fuse. So, whatever metal has been engulfed, they are not going to be degraded. So, that will result in recurrent infections again. So, these lysosomal granules and the lysosomes are not going to be degraded. So, they appear as giant granules in the neutrophils. So, this is the characteristic appearance of shediac higashi syndrome we see in a peripheral smear. Other than that, other uh, cells which contain granules, they are also going to be defective like platelets, the nerves, then the melanocytes. So, when these uh, melanocytes, they are uh, secretory granules are defective, melanin is going, not going to be produced and that will result in albinism. Same goes for nerve defects. The granules which are present, as uh, Nissel's granules are not going to be present. So, nerve conduction defects will be present. And other than that, bleeding because platelet granules are not going to be released properly. So, platelet plug will not form. So, that will again cause bleeding. Moving on to the next disease which is chronic granulomatous disease. Here, the defect is going to be in the phagocyte oxidase that is the NADPH oxidase enzyme. So, when I already mentioned this NADPH oxidase is a multi-component enzyme. So, when the membrane part of it, the, uh, when the membrane part of this enzyme is defective, it is going to lead to a X-linked res uh, recessive pattern uh, and the um, component which was defective is glycoprotein 91 FOX. FOX stands for phagocyte oxidase. And again, uh, if the cytoplasmic component is defective, it is going to result in an autosomal recessive pattern of this disease. And here the defect was present in the P47 and P67 FOX components. So, both of this will again cause uh, de uh, defective phagocytosis. So, what will happen? Eventually, chronic inflammation will take over and there will be lots of granuloma formation in this disease. And that gives the name of this disease that is chronic granulomatous disease. So, we have a very important MCQ over here. So, this chronic granulomatous disease can be diagnosed with a test called as NBT test. NBT stands for Nitro Blue Tetrazoleum test. So, usually this NBT is colorless. When the phagocyte oxidase enzyme is normal, what will happen? This FOX enzyme can convert this colorless NBT into a blue colored compound called as form formazin. But in this chronic granulomatous disease, this FOX enzyme is defective. So, this reaction cannot take place and this NBT will remain colorless. So, that is called as the positive test in chronic granulomatous disease. So, the next defect will be MPO deficiency. We already saw about MPO enzyme which is myeloperoxidase which was important for the HTO2 MPO halide system. So, we saw it was the most important bactericidal system which results in the formation of HOCl. So, when this deficiency of MPO, we, uh, this HOCL will not be formed and phagocyto phagocytic killing will not happen. Okay. So, all of these diseases will result in recurrent infections. So, that is it for today's video. So, in the next class, we will be seeing about the inflammatory medias mediators which were responsible for causing this acute inflammation. So, thanks for listening. If you like my content, consider subscribing and sharing it to your friends who might also benefit from my video. Thank you.